This experience happened in 1998 when my father was diagnosed with lung cancer. I was working out of town and was unable to return home immediately to care for him. I was very busy at work and I did not have much vacation time available to care for him. Finally, my family decided to have a family caregiver take care of him. I would call my father every day to ask how he was doing and to talk to him. But I knew I couldn't really care for him. I couldn't even see for myself how he was doing or know if his condition was being treated effectively. It made me very heartbroken and helpless, and I felt how powerless I was. I could only hope that he would be strong enough to get through this period. I remember when I was young, my father would often take me to the park to play, teach me how to swim, ride a bike, etc. He always guided me patiently so that I would learn to persevere and work hard through constant failure. Even when I fell down, he would not worry too much like other parents, but would encourage me to try again. These experiences gave me a deep understanding of my father's strength and perseverance, and taught me to face difficulties with courage. Even though I am not as strong as my father, his teachings have always inspired me to overcome many difficulties and become a stronger and more confident person. One day, I got off work very late and I was feeling very tired. I had just arrived home to rest when my head suddenly started to spin and my vision began to blur. I swayed and tried to keep my balance, but I eventually passed out on the floor. When I woke up again, I was back in the backyard of my father's house. I suddenly felt a strong energy around me that made me a little uneasy. I turned around and saw a familiar figure, it was my father. I was surprised because I had never met a spirit before, let alone the spirit of my father. He looked much younger. He was still wearing that black jacket that he loved so much. I was so shocked. I couldn't believe my eyes. He looked so peaceful and serene. I didn't know what to do. My father's spirit communicated with me very gently. He told me that he was fine now and not to worry about him because he was now free from pain and distress. Hearing my father's words. My heart began to become calm. I no longer felt fearful and worried, but felt relieved. My father said to me, he is coming home. I looked at him curiously and said, isn't this your home? He was silent for a moment, then smiled softly. Then he told me that this was only the place where he had lived, and that heaven was his true home. I pleaded with my father, Dad, can you take me to see heaven? I want to see your new home, and I want to see that beautiful world. My father smiled and replied, Of course you can, follow me. With his finger guiding me, I felt my body and my father's soul ascending into the sky together, and the physical sensation was not unpleasant, but rather relaxing. I felt like my body was lifted by an invisible force, and then I left the earth and came to a peaceful and tranquil world. I opened my eyes with a jolt and was amazed by the sight before me. I saw a glorious golden city. The sky was light blue, and white clouds floated leisurely by. There were many beautiful buildings in the city, and there were no noises, only harmonious music. This is heaven. My father's voice broke my imagination of this wonderful world. I saw a huge door, a tall and gorgeous golden door. The door was cast with countless details of exquisite patterns, as if to show people its splendor and dignity. An angel dressed in a white robe with beautiful wings approached us, smiling and greeting us. She took us to a room next to the main door. In the center of the room was a large round table with a thick book on it, which seemed to be a record of my father's life. The angel told us to sit down. I saw a huge screen on which a replay was playing. 
the replay showed the good things my father had done. He cared about others, was passionate about public welfare and had helped many people, which made me feel very proud and touched. The angels present told me that these things were remembered in heaven and that his good deeds gave him a better life in heaven. A few of the scenes were particularly impressive to me. One of them was when I was about seven years old. We ran into an old grandmother on the street whose face was full of anxiety. The grandmother told us that her wallet had been stolen by a thief. Leaving her very anxious and helpless. Seeing the grandmother's situation, my father did not hesitate to take out all the cash from his own pocket and give it to the grandmother and use his cell phone to call the police. Afterwards, my father took me along to visit the grandmother, gave her something and told me, we have to help others to the best of our ability so that our world will be a better place. I was deeply touched by his words and I think we should all try our best to help people who need help. My father's actions made me feel very proud and the care and kindness he showed is an example I will learn and pursue throughout my life. I also saw another scene. When my father was young, he used to sponsor an elementary school located in a rural area. This elementary school did not have enough funds to provide a good education to the children there. My father believed that these children should have the opportunity to receive a better education, so he decided to fund this elementary school. He did not tell anyone, including family and friends, and did not expect anything in return. He started from a good heart and quietly helped these children. The father gave his time and money to this effort, but he didn't care about that so much as he wanted to make sure that these children got the opportunities they deserved. I realized I didn't know enough about my father, and I was deeply in awe of all the good he had done and the hardships he had gone through. Finally, I asked the angel, can I stay here with my father? The angel gently shook his head, gazed at me fondly, and said, my son, your time has not yet come. You still have many things to accomplish, and many people need your help and company. You cannot give up on this wonderful world because your mission is not yet complete. After listening to the angel's words, I felt a sorrow in my heart, but at the same time I understood more about the meaning and value of life. I began to understand that although I could not be with my father, I had other important responsibilities and obligations to fulfill. The angel took my father and me to the entrance of heaven. The angel said to me, it's time to say goodbye to your father. I felt a wave of sadness come over me because I knew this would be the last time my father and I would see each other. I looked at my father and tears slipped down my cheeks. My father gently wiped away my tears with his hand and said gently, Don't be sad, my son. We will meet again, and I will be here waiting for you when you finish your mission. I nodded my head and held back my tears with all my might. My father hugged me tightly. I felt the warmth and comfort of his body, as well as his strength and determination. In my father's embrace, I felt an incomparable happiness and satisfaction, as if all the pain and difficulties were smoothed out in this moment. My father looked at me fondly and said, I have to go, but I will always love you. Remember, I will always be by your side, protecting you and supporting you, no matter what time it is. Live your life well, pursue your dreams, and be a kind and worthy person. Listening to my father's words, I felt infinitely strong and inspired, and I decided to always be strong and brave to face the challenges and tests of life, and become a person who would make my father proud. Finally, my father gently kissed my forehead and waved his hand to me. The moment I saw my father walk through the gates of heaven, I was overwhelmed with emotion. I saw him filled with an overwhelmingly pure energy, and his clothes instantly turned into a robe of pure white color. My father turned to me and smiled, 
his face filled with joy and contentment. He told me that he was going to walk into this wonderful place and watch over us with the angels. I felt overwhelmed with sadness, I didn't want him to leave me, I wanted to be with him, never to be separated. But my father told me that my time had not yet come and that I needed to go back to earth to continue my life. He said he would always be by my side to watch over me and protect me until I could walk through the gates of heaven as well. I nodded my head in understanding. But I couldn't stop the tears from flowing down my face. The angel told me, it's time for you to go back, too. I began to feel heavier and heavier, like a heavy stone, falling rapidly toward the ground. I tried to struggle, trying to resist this invisible force, but everything seemed so powerless. I felt the air around me become thicker and thicker, and it became extremely difficult to breathe, as if the whole world was blocking me. Gradually, I began to feel the light and sound around me, and I knew that I was back. I tried to sit up, but my whole body felt unusually weak. I took a deep breath and tried to calm down. I was thinking, why am I having such a strange dream? Just then, my cell phone suddenly rang, and the sharp ringing startled me. I had a bad feeling in my heart. I heard my brother's voice, and he told me that my father had just died, but I hadn't been answering his calls. The news hit me like a heavy hammer blow to the heart. I was not dreaming, I had really seen my father. It made me feel very sad and self-conscious. I can't imagine what his last moments were like. He left me just like that, without any warning. Whenever I thought about it, my heart felt like it was being torn apart with pain. I kept asking myself if I could go back in time, could I do something to make him less alone when he left? I know that my father is doing well in heaven now. But I often blame myself for not seeing the last of him. Family members are the most valuable assets in our lives, but many times we overlook them because of our busy lives and work. However, when we lose our family members, we realize how important they were in our lives. We will regret that we did not spend more time with them, did not say, I love you, to them, and did not share our life with them. Therefore, we should always remind ourselves to cherish our family members around us and not to regret until we lose them. We should take time to spend with our family members, communicate with them and listen to their hearts. We should also show our love to our family members and let them know how important they are in our hearts. In this way, even if we lose our family members one day, we will be able to recall with peace of mind the good times we had with them and will not leave any regrets or remorse.